Let's continue to examine two more scientific unknowables of the very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Just a second. In the very first verse of the Bible, we find a remarkable piece of evidence of supernatural authorship. I'll be there in a minute. Don't stop without me. In the beginning, me. time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. The Bible speaks of the creation of time, space, and matter in the very okay. first verse. Oh, it's okay. It's only P.P. P. Simmons waffling on about time, space, and matter, so I didn't miss anything. What he's saying is that the Bible mentions time, space, and matter in the first verse, so this must be, in his own words, remarkable evidence of supernatural authorship because we now know that the universe is made of time, space, and matter. And how could Bronze Age people possibly have known about these three things? My question is, is the opening verse in the Bible unique? Are there other holy books that also prophesied time, space, and matter in the opening verse as evidence of supernatural authorship? Why, yes. In Cinderella, for example, a story about magic and fairies, it says the wife of a rich man felt her end was drawing near. That's time. She called her daughter to her bedside. Both the daughter and the bed are made of matter. And the verse refers to heaven, which of course is space. A remarkable piece of evidence of supernatural authorship. That's right, P.P. Here's another supernatural opening verse from a story called The Wicked Prince. Look, time, space, and matter. A remarkable piece of evidence. Yes, Hans Christian Andersen is clearly a god, and these stories prove the supernatural. Or maybe P.P. P. Simmons just doesn't get out much and doesn't read much outside the Bible. But at least he can watch this video and see yet another example of supernatural authorship. Because in the very first verse we have time, just a second, space, I'll be there in a minute, and matter. Unfortunately, P.P. P. Simmons won't make the final ballot for this year's Golden Crocoduck because I have to void the nomination. His belief that the Bible, or if you like fairy stories like Cinderella or the Wicked Prince, are evidence of supernatural authorship is purely that, a belief. And of course it's impossible to disprove that Hans Christian Andersen is a god. Belief doesn't qualify because the Golden Crocoduck is about the misrepresentation of facts. However, the next nominated video by YouTuber BT3701 does qualify. He kindly provided a translation to this speech in which Hitler apparently declared Darwinism the state religion. Hold on a second. Sorry to be a Nazi party pooper, but I think your grasp of German might not be up to the job of translating the Führer. Let's just run that again. Now even I can tell that this doesn't mean we're a socialist nation, therefore we accept Darwinism. Perhaps German scholars can correct me, but I'd translate this as we won't lie and we won't cheat. And when I googled this I found the source. The footage comes from Hitler's 1933 proclamation to the German nation soon after becoming Chancellor. He didn't mention Darwin or natural selection at all. The translation is completely fictitious. The fact that the English translation is written with the spelling and grammar skills of a five-year-old and that this is a creationist website should alert even creationists to the possibility that the channel operator is being economical with the truth. So who would be stupid enough not only to believe this mistranslation but want to use it as evidence without checking it? Well, this guy would. This is perfect for my Hitler video, said a fan on BT3701's video forum. I'm going to link this video in the scroll down. And indeed he did. Here, under his own video about Hitler, he promoted BT3701's spuriously translated video. This video entitled Hitler Promotes Darwinism is a real mind opener. Hitler intended to exterminate believers in Christ, creationists too, and said so in the same speech on his video. He did? Well, let's take a look. In Yes, indeed, according to the translation, Hitler says he'll legislate law, I guess as an alternative to legislating something else, 
to exterminate less favoured people such as Jews, along with all creationist, apostrophe S, and evangelical Christian, apostrophe S. But what Hitler actually said is, of course, completely different to legislating law to exterminate Christians. He's saying Germany will rise again through the hard work and commitment of the German people. So who is this guy who was gullible enough to fall for this mistranslation and promote it on his own YouTube channel as evidence that Hitler planned to exterminate creationists? Oh no, it's Megasage. Remember him? Psalm 9610. You're a scary man. But Megasage is already a candidate for the coveted Golden Crocoduck. This nomination is for BT3701, for not only lying to atheists about Hitler's hatred of creationists, but also misleading his fellow creationists. This is such a recipe for embarrassment that I wondered whether BT3701 wasn't a closet atheist, deliberately setting up gullible creationists for a fall. So I messaged him to check. BT3701 assured me that he was a creationist and was quite happy to admit that he had lied in the translation. In fact, he'd like an award for it. BT's rationale is that the captions aren't a misrepresentation of Hitler's acceptance of Darwinism. Well, yes, they are BT because they're made up. Hitler accepted Darwin's theory of natural selection, he just didn't understand it. He thought it meant survival of the strongest and was all about the strong crushing the weak. In fact, human evolution was propelled by our ability to cooperate and our reliance on intelligence rather than brute strength. But if you want to quote Hitler articulating the theory of natural selection, then why not quote him? I mean his actual words rather than something you made up. Otherwise, you're misleading people who are prepared to believe you without bothering to check. And you're doing no service to your own cause, because when someone like Megasage regurgitates this crap, he's going to be laughed at when someone points out that it is crap. And even a paraphrase has to accurately reflect what someone says. Now, of course, Hitler did kill Christians, but not because they were Christians, it was because they were opponents to his regime. Making up an assertion by Hitler that he'll exterminate creationists and evangelical Christians will lead the most gullible and the most stupid to believe that it's actually true. And here's a post on BT3701's video forum to prove it. Someone who seems convinced that Hitler not only killed six million Jews, but also six million Catholics. That's what happens when you start a Chinese whisper. And did BT3701 come clean and correct him? No, he says, I totally agree. I'm sure the comments section will be swamped with the usual irrelevant nonsense about whether Hitler was an atheist or a Christian. But this isn't about Hitler's religion, it's about whether it's okay to make up quotes and to lie in support of your beliefs. If you have to fake the evidence, then there's obviously something wrong with those beliefs. So I'll leave the last word with the man who exemplifies this better than anyone, who obviously blazed a trail for BT3701, and who similarly showed pride in his own propaganda. And this time, there's no mistranslation. Eine gute Regierung ohne Propaganda kann ebenso wenig bestehen wie eine gute Propaganda ohne eine gute Regierung.